you are you look at the blood, you sort of scrape it up a little bit, and you go, This this is not human blood. This is a something I haven't seen before. Some an odd sort of almost blackened blood. This is not like any blood I've seen before. Lilith, you're walking I assume everybody else is sort of walking around the room looking at these items. They're all very uh, ornate and very well put together kind of thing. If there's anything specific you'd like to, to do. No, I just was looking for more signs of blood or something. But You, uh, specifically for blood, after uh, a few minutes, five or six minutes, you look around, you see on the statue of the bowl some dried, darkened blood, almost like shadow, on its horn. Zephyr, look at the bull horn. Like, is this the same dark and it's kind of dark like, like, I don't know. Seems like maybe that's where the injury occurred. I will go look at the horn. Is it the same blood? Yes. Yes, it does appear to be the same. Uh, Saul is going to go over to the platter of white sticks on the table and, and investigate those. Don't touch anything. I am now thinking this beast came alive. So these are ivory sticks. Give me a intelligence or religion check, if you would. Whew. It's a nat 20 for 20. You look at these and you know exactly what they are. You've seen these before. These are uh, fortune-telling sticks. Uh, you've not only have you seen these before, you, you somewhat know how to use them. There's like a handful, probably around 30 sticks, and they're all sort of piled in this little platter and these are very nice you know you've seen these before and these are exquisite oh oh my you know i i I think these these could definitely be of some use uh we've already taken the these other things i'll I'll take these as well so saul reaches down and grabs them so you pick them up uh and you know how to use these if uh if you would like to use them or are you just going to put them away I just wanted to know before he touched them, like if they were in an arrangement that told some sort of future or something. But anyway, he took them oh, down. That's a so. good point. Would I have noticed anything uh, particular about how they were arranged? They, they were just there, piled on the platter. So uh, you pick these these uh, white ivory sticks up, and like I said, you with a twenty, you've seen these before. You know how to use them. There's no danger in using them. It's just a. It's more like a. If you were to say you found a Ouija board or some kind, and you go, oh, I know how these work, right? Yeah, I suppose um, there doesn't seem to be any danger uh, around at the moment, um, apart from an ominous trail of blood. So this is probably a good time to just give them a whirl. So you know how these work. You you take and you sort of take these sticks, you sort of shake them, and you drop them onto this platter. And roll me a D8, please. While he's doing that, I am backing away from the bull. So that's an 8 you throw these down and if you've ever seen people like they they throw bones down and they look at it and they they sort of give some kind of a fortune you look at these sticks and you say the the sticks say that we will have good fortune all of us well i'll be i'm very glad that i decided to take these they're a good omen i i I should definitely keep them so i'll pick them up and and put them in my bag well if they didn't want you to take them they should have hidden them or guard them more appropriately. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Buzz checks his sheet to see what his alignment is uh, and doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else in this room? You guys have the list. Anything else you want to look at or move I, on? I think I would actually like to take a look at the cross swords. I, mean, I, can, I can only use a certain types Although I guess I'm proficient with simple and martial weapons, so... What types of uh, swords do these look like? These are two long swords. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, is there anything... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, try, I'll examine them, see if they have like any maybe any markings on them or anything like that. Like on the blades or something. They look like they're, they're fine crafted, almost like ceremonial type swords. Uh, rather than like weapons that have been used in, in battle. Um, you know, like the... the the hilt is very well crafted, um, but almost decorative. But fine, fine material, but not anything you would probably go into battle with. Okay, I mean, I'll take one off of the wall and like swing it around a bit, you know, and like feel its weight and just kind of 
mess around for a few seconds. Yeah, no, it's 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 pretty it's it's nice, but I don't think you get the feel that this is any better than anything you you have more more you know ah this is you know it's almost like costume jewelry really. I'll uh, mm-hmm. I'll set it back once I've kind of flitted around with You're it. Like, eh. So the we haven't examined the scythe, the maul, uh, the skulls, which I and the animal furs. I would kind of would like to look at these. Is it just like a pile of skulls? Yeah, there's like three or four that are sort of in like a little set, like three down at the bottom and one on top, almost like it's a decorative type item. You can give me a uh, nature check to see what they look like. Six. Anybody that wants to. The ranger monk didn't want to do yeah. a nature check. <laughs> I mean, my intelligence is eight, so yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't know. It doesn't look human. The skulls are not human. They seem to be some uh, oh, uh, different type of uh, large humanoid type creature, but you've never seen the, you know, this type of creature with the skin all taken off before. You. Well, they're not bees. <laughs> Everybody give me a perception real quick. Or a, a nature, sorry. As you see Buzz looking at these skulls. 10? 18 for Zephyr. 12 for Saul. Saul, Zephyr, you, I mean, you all you look at this and these are ogre skulls. And as, you, as you're looking around the room, you're starting to put together the fact that these look like things that, that the owner of this place may have slain himself. And these are little uh, tokens of remembrance of things that he did. So, Zephyr, you go over, you look at them, do you... You pick them up, you leave them where leave they them are. Leave where they are, okay. just look at them. I actually want to look at all three the doors in this room and try and figure out which one to use to get out of this room. Okay, so there's a door to the north, a door to the east, and a door to the south. Which one do you want to look at? Mage hand, mage hand, mage hand. What do the actual doors <laughs> look like? Uh, all the doors that you've come across so far seem to be exactly the same. They're sort of this wooden, sort of odd-looking... I mean, by odd, just a weird sheen to it. Um, but all have the same design. The handles are all similar. Also. I believe we should move on. But I do not know the best way to go. As, as you look at all the doors directly, are you walking over to each of them? Or are you just sort of standing in the Standing room in the middle of the room looking at the doors. Okay. So give me a quick perception check. Perception, 17. Okay, so you notice the door in the north side looks like it's slightly ajar, slightly open. The other two look like they are closed completely. It uh, doesn't look like there's any blood or anything coming from any of those doors. It only looks like it emanated from this room. Okay, so I'll go to the north door then and use my mace to push it open a little farther. Okay, what's everybody else doing? Complaining because that's my job. <laughs> but I will follow Zephyr. Yeah, I'll just support her. Be right there. Uh, Lilith, as you start to walk up to get next to Buzz, you get this sense and you turn around and look and you see the head of the bowl turn and look down in your direction and let's roll in this these freaking doors oh wow I got another 20 for initiative (laughs) another nat 20 for initiative 23 for buzzing 20 for Zephyr 9 4 this bronze plated bowl leans down looks at Lilith, its eyes glow. It steps off of the platform. Uh, Buzz, you're up first. All right, immediately drawing Stinger. I'm going to loop around behind it. Now attack. Hey, that's a good one. Uh, 26 to hit. And my swarm kind of pelts into it as well. Total of 11 piercing damage. And then we will bonus action on arm strike. Ooh, that's only a 13 to hit. Uh, that's not going to do it. All right, Zephyr. Um, Seeing how well the flames worked on the other metal things that we fought, I will Sacred Flame it. It needs to succeed on a deck save. That's a 7. That is 12 points of damage, radiant damage. We'll, we'll move on to Lilith. The way I'm standing, I think, should work. So I'm already, like... Kitty corner to this bull, unless it moved. 
and uh, I would like to cast Burning Hands, which is a 15-foot cone, so, like, if you think about how it would branch out, I don't think it would hit Buzz. Nope, you're good. You can you can direct it so it won't hit Buzz. All right, I'm going to cast uh, Burning Hands at third level. I'm going to give it a big bad, so that's a deck save, which I saw it do terribly at. Not this time, it's a 20. Oh. Oh! Yeah, 18 halved. All right, this bowl. That's bull. Uh, comes off the, the, the pedestal and runs into Lilith, goring at Lilith for a 22 to hit. Yeah, that hits. The, so the, the horn of this, uh, this bull drives right into your sternum, doing 25 oh, points of whoa. damage as it lifts you up <laughs> off of the ground and then flops you back down so you slide off of its horn. And its second attack, it takes a hoof strike to Buzz. Ah, no. <laughs> 27 Oh, to no. Hit. Its hind leg shoots out, and its hoof hits you square in the chest, knocking you back. Not not five feet, just knocking you back, uh, taking the breath out of you as you take 12 points of bludgeoning oh, damage. Oh, I got the good end of that stick. I need you to make a constitution save, Buzz. 11. So you will be stunned until the oh, end of your next frig. turn. Saul. All right, Saul sees that this thing is not a beast you want to stay nearby, so he's going to back up a bit to put a bit of space between him and it. So he's going to kind of move uh, away from away from the bull, away from the whole party, basically, sort of kitty corner to the other side of the room, and then he is going to cast Firebolt against this bull. Uh, 21 to hit. That hits. But eight fire damage. The the heat is it heats up the bronze and you see it sort of melt a little bit off on the side of its large, bulking, meaty shoulder, and it sort of turns its head your direction. Now we go to Buzz. Stunned, can't do shit. Okay, down the end of your next now you're not stunned anymore. Uh Zephyr. Zephyr will reach out and touch Lilith and cure wounds. Thank you. For eleven hit points. Better than a kick in the sternum from a bull. <laughs> right. If I were to activate my wings of flying, would it get an opportunity against me? Are you going to move outside of its range? I was just going to fly up in the air where it can't ram me anymore. Um, you know, you move five feet out, out of the, away from it, I think it would get the opportunity to try to hit you when you do. Anatomically, though, a bull ramming would be pretty It's a big hard. bull, too. It just makes sense to Firebolt. It's working. It does more damage than my other spells, so I'm gonna I'm gonna Firebolt at him. It's 19 to hit. 19 does not hit. Okay, so the blast goes up off to the side. The Bronze Bull, its turn. It looks over at Saul as he was unhappy with the last thing that happened. It charges Saul, giving Lilith an opportunity attack if she wants to take it. Okay, Lilith's going to quick grab her dagger and see what she can do. 23 to hit. That hits. For 7 damage. All right, the bull runs over and and uh, charges Saul with uh, trying to gore him. So let's... That's a 21 to hit. Just barely. <laughs> Once again, the, the bull runs, charging his head down. It's... Uh, horn goes straight into your side 25 points of damage give me a uh, strength saving throw please six pounding into you and you fly back into the wall uh, falling into the large griffin wings and as soon as you hit the wings suddenly you're not here anymore (laughs) in your mind suddenly You are flying up into the sky. You smell the smells of the air. You hear the wind rushing by your ears. You you are way up above the mountain, swooping down. It's almost like you're seeing through the eyes of this giant griffin. As it flies and and circles, you see a a cow down in the valley and you feel your claws on the bottom like your hands extended, and you swoop down, grabbing onto the cow and crushing it with your your massive claws. 
the wind flowing by your hair, you can feel the coldness on your skin. And suddenly your eyes open up and you come back to the room and you see the bowl staring right at you with the heat puffing out of its nose as it kicks at you. And then a 26 to hit with the hoof doing 10 bludgeoning damage as it drives into you and you fall onto the, onto your knees. Saul is no longer conscious. Oh. Saul. <laughs> Alrighty. Don't roll one. Did you, Did roll, you roll one? one? It, <laughs> Rolled it, a two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. His immediate reaction. That's terrifying. One down. Buzz. Okay. I'm going to no longer stun. I give my head a shake and move to the bull. Stand, uh, standing over Saul. And we're going to try to sting it. Ooh, another 26 to hit. Nice. So that's only eight piercing. Uh, and what my bees are going to do this time, instead of the extra damage, I'm going to get them, or sorry, the, so the they're going to make the bull uh, do a strength saving through throw, please. DC 14. That's a 21. Fudge. So the the swarm presses their mass against this bull's butt because I'm behind it. <laughs> and they try, and they try to push the bull, but the bull just like doesn't even move an inch. Uh, and I will I will follow up with an unarmed strike with my bonus action, which is a critical fail. Mm. Mm. Okay, so you just you reach out to swing you miss completely, lose your footing a little bit, sort of fall over into the table, uh, knocking all the contents on the table onto the floor, but you you catch yourself on the wall. Uh, Zephyr. Let's see. I'm going to run across the room to where Saul is. And take his brooch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How dare you. If I pull an unconscious body out of the five-foot area of engagement, does the unconscious body get an opportunity attack? No, I'll say you can pull him. Okay. I'm going to pull him about ten foot back away from the bull. And if you'll let me, I would like to cast a spell as well. No, uh, that's fine, yeah. Uh, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds and give Saul ten hit points. Thank you. All right, so you're done. Lilith. I'm going to cast Firebolt at it. Uh, 15, which doesn't hit. I'll just step towards Zephyr and Saul, sort of to give it more targets other than Saul right now. Kind of become more adjacent with them. The bull turns its head, blows out the steamy puff of air out of its nostrils, looks at Zephyr, and charges. I didn't do anything to it. 21 to hit. Uh, 17 at points of damage as it gores into you with its other horn, shaking its head, stomping its foot down onto Saul. Do I get an attack of opportunity? You do, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, so I got a 25 to hit. That hits. Uh, 9 piercing, and... I can get the swarm to do something. I'm, bef- I'm going to try to to push it again, so it makes another strength saving throw. Oh, that's a little better for you. Uh, that would be a nine. Okay, so that is a fail. So the swarm can push it 15 feet horizontally in a direction of my choice. I'm going to push it like back, kind of like Into around. The yeah, literally like 15 feet. Di- yes, exactly that way. So one more square. Yeah. So take your hit points back, Zephyr. Yay. I mean, I don't know what its movement is, but maybe that'll do something. Did it knock over the mage statue? So No, no. So you, as it starts to move away, you take and your your swarm grabs this thing and s- pushes it over 15 feet diagonally away from, from Zephyr. It sort of slides across the ground, pushing back on it. Uh, but then it regains its uh, footing after it, it goes the full 15 feet. All right, guys, hear me out. We go to the closet, we take a nice nap, we come finish this later. Okay, while you're saying that, the bull charges Buzz. Oh, frick! <laughs> uh, that's a 27 to Oh, hit. yeah. And that's going to gore you for... Man, these things are 
heavy hitters. Oh my god. 27 hit points. Buzz. Yeah, we're gonna as die. As this drives into you. Oof. Ouch. It pulls back and tries to hit you with its hoof. Okay. That's an eight, 18 to that hit. Hit, that hits. 10 hit points of damage as it kicks you and sort of turns towards Lilith as it takes its final move and kicks you on the process. Saul. I'm still standing, but hurt. I got you. How how beat up does this bull look? You know, it looks like, because uh, this is plates of, bra- of bronze, and a number of the plates have been sort of fallen off onto the floor. You see there's some big melted areas where you've hit it with fire. It's looking pretty hurt, but it's still... it's. Still all four legs and, and horns pointed. Still got some life in it. Um, Saul is going to cast Fireball. Unfortunately, that's going to hit Buzz. I could cast it far away enough that it would probably miss Lilith, but still it's going to catch Buzz. But I can use a... Um, I'm going to use one of my sorcery points uh, for meta magic to uh, cast careful spell so I can allow up to four creatures to automatically succeed on a saving throw of a spell that I cast. You're still going to kill him. Oh, that's true. He'll still take damage even if he succeeds. Yeah. <laughs> Leland's face this whole time has been like, yeah, welcome to what I know. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and I'm an idiot because I should have been favored foaming everything this entire time. It's easy to forget that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, yeah. It would be adding a bit more damage, but not too much, but. Yeah, I don't think there's a, po- a way that I can do that without hitting Buzz. I could hit Lilith, but that's not great either. Well, see, this is the problem with this freaking character that I've rolled up. Uh, Firebolt it is. Uh, 16 to hit. That does not hit, unfortunately. Um, and I think I will use a bit of my movement to retreat a bit further away from the bull. So I'm going to move back sort of behind and beside Zephyr, close to the door that we came through. Back to Buzz. Oh, okay. I'm going to circle this bull, put myself between it and Zephyr, and we're going to go to town and and attack it. Oh, yeah, that's only a 10 with the sword. Unarmed strike as a bonus action. Hey, that's better. That's going to be a 24 and I will favor foe it, which just marks it actually this turn. Then the first time I hit that foe per turn, it deals an extra d4. So nothing right now. Uh, four bludgeoning with the unarmed strike. Zephyr. I will run up to Buzz and put my hands on his shoulders and say heal and give him 17 hit points back. Whoa. That's good. At uh, still a gore hair away from dying, but. <laughs> and then back up again to the door. <laughs> All right, now that the bull's in a prime position, I'm going to target where the statue originated ish around there um, and cast Fireball. So you you and the bull are on opposite sides of the uh, the large statue in the room. Yeah, so I'll, I'll move out of the way, but I'm choosing I'm choosing to shoot uh, my fireball away from our party a bit, so that he's right on the edge. Okay, so, like, so you're just trying to just trying to get the edge of this thing. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, no I'm problem. I'm catching him in the fray of it. It's do or die. Everyone's looking terrible. I know Saul probably like. Well, we don't know each other that well. I was gonna say Saul probably would have wanted to cast it. All right, let's see. Well, what do we know about Saul? He loves spice, and now we know he loves brooches. That's about the two things that we know. Yep. So it's a deck save, uh, DC's 15, and I'm going to use my things to give it disadvantage. My points. So that's all my sorcery points. It fails. And I rolled a one and twos. So, oh, crap. Okay, 18. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Hell, I could have survived that. <laughs> That's so bad. My fo- firebolt's better than that. The room just ignites and the fire. Yeah, just destroy it all. Smashing, uh, you know, against the walls and rolling up into the ceiling as the, uh, the it hits the, the bowl, you know, melting half of his side off so you can see sort of a hollow core to this thing. 
it sort of staggers a bit and then gets its footing back again and focuses on Lilith. 16. That is my AC, but can I react with shield? Yeah. Yep, so it adds five, so it doesn't hit. Okay, and then it tries to hit you with its hoof uh, for 24 to hit. Yeah, that hits. 14 points of damage as it hoofs you right in the hip. The Saul. Uh, He is going to cast Firebolt again, hoping for a bit more success this time around. That's better. 24 to hit. That hits. Kill it. GG's. Kill it with fire. Kill it. Kill it. 10 points of fire damage. Okay, so the fire shoots out, goes over the bull's head, uh, and just sort of hits his face, and his horn sort of falls off the top of his head, making it sort of off balance, and then it falls over on its side as the steam and the heat rise from the bronze remnants. Yes. (laughs) The room is still ablaze. (laughs) All right, we're out of initiative. (laughs) Half that room is destroyed. (laughs) I think I'm going to use one of my abilities, Healing Hands, on myself. Um, I can heal hit points equal to my level. Would we like to sit here a moment and, and rest for a short amount of time? I don't know that I trust this room. Let's go to that closet. There's a nice looking couch. You have a point. That closet did seem a lot more safe than this room. Perhaps we retreat there for a short while. Uh, We all look in very bad shape. Short rest. At at least. Yeah, Saul wants to go back to that other room. It seemed more safe than this room. Stay away from those weird hook hands, though. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you go back into the room, and, and, you know, there are some nice, comfortable places to sit. And you do look back down the hallway, and you do see the hand still reaching out. Uh, trying to, to grasp onto where the robe was. Ugh. So Buzz has seen that for the first time, so he's going to mage hand and <laughs> okay. clasp hands with this hook yeah. and see what happens. As soon as it grabs onto the mage hand, which is more of a spectral type thing, right? It's not really... Does it have uh, actual physical... I guess it does have substance, I think right? it must because it's able to lift things, right? But it, But it is a spectral hand. It grabs onto the mage hand and sort of folds back into the wall almost like a hook. And when it does, the mage hand slides through it and then the hand comes back out of the wall again, like to grasp. I see this happening and I'll walk up to it and I will take out of my sack a common pair of pants and hold it up for it to hold onto. Okay, it, it latches and grabs onto the pants goes back to the wall and turns back into a hook. <laughs> and I'll nod to Buzz. Told you, you could have used it as a back scratcher. Lost your chains. I believe it would have tried to grab your back. In a good way. Mm. Okay, so y'all take a short rest and you head back to the north door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll speed this up. The patrons, the patrons <laughs> demand quality. <laughs> Do they? Deserve, Why are they listening to deserve us? quality. <laughs> That's yeah, better. They can make any amount of demands that they want. <laughs> <laughs> that don't mean shit around here. <laughs> okay, so the door the door of the north it was slightly ajar. You can you can see down the hallway. It's about forty or see was it twenty feet down and there's another door. The door at the other end is, is sort of a barred door, so you can see through it. And the the way you started that I thought it was gonna be a nursery nursery rhyme. The door to the north is slightly ajar. It's just out of reach. It's a little too far. You can see a little through it. There are just bars. Another missed opportunity. Bill is raising a, his hand. I have hand. a question. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I, I, don't, I don't really look at you when I play. I don't blame you. Not specifically you. I don't really look at you. I try not to look at you, Bill. It's revolting. Um... I don't know how to make take a short rest as my character. Oh, okay. <laughs> in, in D&D Beyond? So I'm a, I'm a sorcerer. What, On paper. what hit, die do I, hit dice do I roll? It's a, it's a D6 plus your con. Uh, looks like Buzz is up front. Yeah. So this is a bar. It's just a barred door. Yeah, it looks like, you know, um, bars like, uh, like, like a, a prison s- door. Like a cell type of thing, right? 
there is a there is a big lock mechanism on there, but the door also seems to be open a little bit. Maybe we don't go I through this one. I will check it. Mage hand and push it open. <laughs> it opens. Is it locking to keep us in or no out? No traps detected. Okay. And I step through. Should we be going this way? I don't know, but hurry up. I'm behind you. So you look into the hallway. It looks like it goes down about 50, some 60 feet. And there's a door to the north and a door to the south and a door to the far east of the hallway. Uh, the two, one to the north and one to the south, are both barred doors. The one to the east is a solid uh, structure. Are any of them slightly ajar? So, Buzz, you walk in, is it by walking down to the doors? Yeah, I'll, I'll walk. I'll walk to the the north and south one and see, to kind of peer through the bars on each each one. Okay, so when you get to the northern, look into the northern room. It's a cubicle. Inside, you see uh, an old bed. It looks like you know meager. A bed. We could take a long rest. Meager bed. You know, there's not much there. An old ratty. Uh, a blanket, and you see on the floor is the remains, the skeleton that's sort of in pieces laying on the ground. Okay, never mind. The uh, room to the south through the, the bars is pretty much the same as the one to the north, but you don't see any skeletal uh, body or anything. It's just sort of an empty room. Do both of these doors have the big locks on them as well? They both have locks on them, yes, and they are shut. Buzz isn't going to go into... I mean, they're clearly like cells, right? Buzz isn't going to... Yeah. He's going to go down to the, the solid door. Uh, the corridor terminates at a dead end. At the eastern hallway, terminus is a barred iron door with silver glyphs upon it. And it also... The outline of the door sort of has a silver encasement around it. Maybe we don't go through this one. Anybody want to give me an ar- arcana check? Yes, yeah, Saul will. Saul's interested in the uh, the glyphs. Uh, just did 20. So, um, Saul, you you look at these, you, you sort of study them for a few minutes, and you think you know what these glyphs are. It's some kind of a warning that serves as the inhabitant of this room will suffer eternal torment. Uh, this some sort of magic seal, then? Uh, Buzz, can you give me a, a perception check? 13. You're looking, as, as Saul's studying this door, uh, you look at the lock, and you realize this probably is about the same size as that key you found. <gasps> Saul, what does it say? Well, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it seems like whatever, uh, something's locked in this room, and it's doomed to suffer, suffer indefinitely, I think. So, something to that effect. I produce the key and kind of like motion with it to the to the others. Like, should I use it? Well, there, there could be, there could be valuable items in there, just stuck behind the door, not being used. There could be something in there that would want to try and kill us, also. Or, or it could be. Salt, shut your mouth. This is nonsense. We are not going this way. Let's turn around. And Lilith starts walking away. Why was the key outside? That's a good question. We could open the door and not go in. Just see what's in there. Well, my thought was we we creak the door open very quickly, take a quick look, and then we can slam it closed again. If, you know, if if there is something dangerous on the other side. I'm going to take two giant steps back. Agreed. Let's let's. I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna mage hand. Give the mage hand the key, and mage hand over there with the key, and uh, from about ten feet away, and try to open this thing. All right. The key fits right into the lock. This doesn't seem right. Easily turning, click, click as it <laughs> turns. The door unlocks. You hear the shock, and you're gonna open the door with the mage hand. Little push. Could you not be a little bit more quiet, Buzz? The door starts to pull towards you. We are breaking into a room attached to prison cells. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, this don't feel right. In the room, which is a lot, much larger cell, you see the bones of a humanoid, tattered robes, 
and up from the bones comes this inky-like substance that forms into a humanoid shape. Shut the door, shut the door, shut the door. Yeah, let's shut the door, shut the door, oh, shut Frank, the door. Oh, Frank, I told you. I saw running. As soon as the, you, the mage hand starts to shut the door, you see the thing sort of fan out into this large type black mist and shoots towards the door as you see its face pull open like it's going to, to bite into you and the door slams shut. Lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it. Oh my gosh. It, yeah, lock yeah, it. yeah, okay. Yeah. Relock. <laughs> Saul, will, Saul will actually rush to the door to, to if he can lock it any quicker than the mage hand could. No, come on. I got the fastest mage hands in the West, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say. So as you shut the door right before the end, you hear the screeching noise that suddenly seals quiet as soon as the silver that's around the outline of the door seals it shut. Y'all, as if that arcane rune around the door wasn't symbol enough for you fools. I, I told you all that we shouldn't go in there. <sighs> I'm going to smack Saul. I'm getting upset with you, Mr. Broach Stealers. It's Mr. Euphrates to you. Hmm. He's all hopped up on spice. He don't know what's right. What is going on here? Basically, that's the wrong door. We got we to gotta pick a new one. Get your mage hand out. All right. Mage hand comes back to me. I'll put the key in my pocket again. Okay. So I assume you locked it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely locked it back up. Let's go back to the half-burned room. Full of trophies. You, there are two doors. There's one to the east and there's one to the south. Someone else picked the door this time. I say we go east. Straight this way. I say we don't listen to Saul. And I walk over to the door to the east and, and try to open it. Oh, gosh. Let buzz! Once again, it's one of these normal handles and you think you, you would just normally pull it. And it doesn't seem to do anything, but as you sort of fiddle around with your thumb and, and do some little twisting, you can see it sort of pushes in and then twists and opens. So each of these doors that you guys are, are trying seem to have a little bit of a, a trick to them. You know, not hard to figure out, but if you know the, how to do it, you can do it very quickly. If you are unfamiliar, you could get yourself, you know, maybe it takes 10 to 15 seconds to open this door. But it's not locked and it opens. I feel like that's important. I know. I feel like Mage Hand needs to keep opening the doors because Mage Hand knows. Okay. So. Okay. I, I, I'll I admit I was, a bit, I was a bit spooked after the last interaction with whatever that was. And I, I just... It was all your fault. We didn't have to see that. I feel like we learned some valuable information, don't oh you think? Okay. Not open the doors with glyphs on them? Yeah. That, Surrounded yes. by prison cells? That's just stupid. <laughs> How would you guys like to proceed? You open the door. There's a short hallway about uh, 15 foot uh, long, and then it turns to the south. So you open it. You got to go first, and you got to look. Well, that's fine. I'll go in. So I walk to the uh, just to the corner and peer around to my right, just around the corner. Okay, so you look around the corner. You see it's a long hallway. Uh, you can see, what, about 60 feet? You're an Asimar. You got dark vision, 60 feet. It's not dark in here, though, right? No, these, there's still these little um, glowing glass orbs that sort of float around, putting some dim light across the, the area. But you can see clearly down about, as far as I revealed there, about 60 feet or so. Uh, about halfway down where you can see there's a door to the uh, east and a door to the west. Well, it looks like there are two more doors down here. Let, let's go take a look. After you. Okay, so you get down to the sort of this junction where the doors go to east and west and there's a hallway still going to the south. So these are doors just like all the other doors, uh, all the other non-cell doors that you've seen so far. Saul, you get down to the, uh, the intersection here. You notice the door to the east looks like it's slightly open. The door to the west is closed. And also, further down the hallway, there's another door that goes off to the west and one at the end of the hallway. Okay, I will uh, gently push Stop! the... Stop! I don't know that we trust slightly open doors. Okay. Mage hand only. <laughs> so... It's so funny how you get paranoid about everything that's Someone ever is happened. leading us somewhere we, we don't want to go. Someone is leading us. Well, perhaps... Saul is leading us. That's also Suspicious. true. Uh, Buzz, would you like to do the honors? 
we should at least take a look, shouldn't we? Ah, uh, it didn't work out so well last time. Well, well, to be fair, that, that was a door with magical runes on it. And but it was a slightly ado- ajar door that led us to that. That's, that's true. Well, then we won't open the next sigil door. And I'll mage hand the slightly ajar one. It opens up. I'll move past past Saul. I'm going to take the lead again. Zephyr, we do have to open doors to get where we're going, right? Well... You can't just not open doors. Y- yeah, but I just feel like someone is leading us a certain way, and it may be a way we don't want to go. Well, right now, Buzz is leading us. We should take the path less traveled. Okay, so Buzz, you go down to the... Uh, there's a small hallway through the door going to the east. It leads to a, a large room. You walk to the end of the hallway, and you see a sizable chamber appears to be a laboratory. A long table nearest the door holds various pieces of glassware, beakers, and tall flask, rows of vials and racks, and other oddly shaped containers. Numerous small boxes and clay containers are on display, as are jugs wrapped with uh, thick twine, uh, a bucket and two casks against the far wall, and several large laden bins. Near the center of the room is a large low set table that supports something large covered with a dusty sheet. Uh, the shrouded object must be at least eight feet across. So there's this great, this great big room. There's all kinds of vials and jars and, and things that would peak your interest if someone had had some kind of an alchemy or, uh, you know, potion type of thing. But it is a very dusty room. It looks like it hasn't been anybody in here in a long time. As you, When you step into the room, the dust sort of from the settled on the floor sort of puffs around your feet. I want to see what's under the sheet. You start walking over to this large table, and as soon as you do, you see the sheet suddenly start to move and rise. It's alive! (laughs) Boy, what have you got us into again? It slowly moves up, and it's the back of the sheet seems to be sort of caught on the back of the table. And as it slides up and the dust sort of pulls off, the sheet slides off the front of this round object. When the sheet finally uh, falls to the floor, you see a creature, a ball-like creature with large fangs, tentacles coming out of its head, eyes at the end of these tentacles. This is a massive floating horror that turns to face you, small eye stalks squirming, yet its opaque main eye appears to be sightless. The creature's body bears numerous battle wounds and signs of rot, and the thing bears a smell, a charnel smell. You see pieces of skin that's sort of sliding off as it raises up and the sheet sort of falls from it. Roll initiative. It's nice knowing (laughs) y'all. This is a hard module. It's been been, been good times. All for Pete's sakes, all. Pete's peppers. For Pete's peppers, all. I'm just going to start chugging potions. <laughs> <laughs> just randomly grabbing whatever we can. Grab all the potions and drink them. We should. It's the worst that could happen. 20. Ooh. 13. A natural one for three. <laughs> oh, man. I thought I was going last. Yeah. Buzz. Uh, 16. So the, the lights, you know, the, the ball lights sort of come into the room and sort of illuminate it brighter than it was previous, and you see this eye, this giant eye, as it seems to look like it's just awoken from a a long rest, as its eyes are sort of all sort of trying to focus, and, you know, like it just woke up, looking around and darting around the room. It's looking for something to behold with its eyes, (laughs) is is what you're saying. (laughs) But once again, the, the main eye doesn't seem to be focusing on you at all. It looks to be like it's glossed over with a with a white glaze almost blind it's got cataracts perfect <laughs> it's our lucky day <laughs> um okay so up first is zephyr would it be safe to assume this thing is undead 
Uh, it definitely does not look like it's living now. I mean, you you make a good assumption there. It looks, it, it's, it's like rotted. I would like to channel my divinity and try and destroy undead if I can. Um, CR one half or lower, so I'm going to assume that's not going to destroy it. <laughs> nice try. It's worth a shot. I present my holy symbol and speak a prayer censoring the undead. Make a wisdom save. 19. Ah, you save. Okay, so that's your turn, right? That is my turn. Okay, Buzz. Let's go to town on this bitch. <laughs> Stinger. 18 to hit. Yes, hits. All right, bees. Swarm. Oh, my goodness. So sword does eight piercing. Bees will do, hey, an additional six piercing. Follow up with a bonus action on arm strike. Actually, you know what? You freaking know what? We're going to pop a key to flurry of blows to make... Right in front of us? Two unarmed strikes right in front of you. An 11 and a 13. Nice. So what's our total? No, no, no. Those are to hit. Oh, no. That's your hits. Okay. that uh, No, that neither... <laughs> my bad. Neither hit. Wow. Nice. I, for a second there, I was like... <gasps> Oh, wait a second. <laughs> and then the DM in you was like, wait a second. Crap. All right. Well, that was a waste of a key, and I'm done. Goes to Lilith. Lilith is going to do some stupid, but maybe smart question mark. She's going to cast darkness. She's going to cast darkness on the eyeball thing, on the biggest eyeball part. Now, the issue is. It's a 15-foot radius sphere, so it's yeah, like... Yeah, you're going to make everything dark around the it. The whole room's going to be dark-ish. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, magical darkness. We can't... None of us could see through it type thing. But magical light could illuminate through it, it says. But I'm just really trying to... Seems to have a lot of eyes, you know? Just got to do something about that. So now we're stuck in this room with this thing and none of us can see. So what Lilith is going to do is she's going to cast it on the beholder. She's going to back up like 10 feet into the hallway. Oh, hey. I will cast it on the table that he's I have over. to spell magic. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cast it on the table. That is a waste of my spell, thank you. Um, Why are you and fucking then... blinding all of us? I and then you can We're... follow the sound of oh my voice my and we can run. Thank God it won't follow the sound of your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Lilith didn't go to Ivy League school or anything, okay? She's going to cast it. She's going to cast it on the table then. Is that the differentiation between normal people and Ivy League? Understanding how sound works? <laughs> <laughs> Can the listener hear how I'm pouting right now? Please. <laughs> It all happens, I cast it, but it's now a static point, and then I'm going to back up in the hallway, I'm going to say, follow the sound of my voice! We should maybe try to run, that's a problem, it's so solid. And I'm idea. going to encourage them to run toward the sound of my voice. That's it, game over, if you don't get out, that's your own problem. <laughs> As we stumble over the table in the darkness. <laughs> Alright, so that's your turn then. If there is magical light in that room, it will sh the magical light will illuminate it. Uh, not in, not that's not entirely true. It says, if any of the spell's area overlaps with an area of light created by a spell second level or lower, the spell that created the light is dispelled. Oh, so it depends on the level. So the uh, magical light from the the I'm, I'm going to say you cast the darkness, but the the globes that are shining, the magical light, is still illuminating enough where everything is very, still very dim, but navigable, navigatable, navigable. Navigatable? No, that's not right. Navigable. That's not right. Navigatable. That's navigable. That's navigable. Not right. You could, okay. <laughs> navigable. We can traverse. <laughs> you can still traverse. Listen, Lilith knew this. Lilith thought ahead. She knew this. This was all part of the plan. Yeah, that's that other game, Blades in the Dark. We're not playing that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go back in time and say you prepared for it. I did. Here's my memory to prove it. <laughs> so, yes, I think there is a magical darkness, but there are like 
uh, as the the orbs are sending out this magical light. When in the magical darkness area, it is considerably darker, but still the light is is uh, giving it a very light haze. I want to just sort of hit it in the middle here, so you guys will not have disadvantage to run. Um, at, at where the globes are. But the eyeballs get disadvantage. Well, the eyeball, well, no. I'll worry about that. <laughs> All right, so Good we're now Good thing my turn to took 15 hours, okay. The, zombie, <laughs> the creature moves towards the direction of the where the door was. Moves about 15 feet over. Uh, Saul, you're sort of in the dark, but you sort of, you know, almost like a, a very dim light you can sort of feel this this thing as you sm- you know really more you smell it as it sort of slides beside you going over to the doorway uh looking down uh the hallway at lilith and let's see i need a d6 here we're gonna see what happens together one of the eyes from its head sort of spins around looking down the hallway I need you to give me, Lilith, a wisdom save, please. Eight. You are, you are, have the condition frightened for one minute. Uh, You can repeat the save at the end of each of your turns, but for now, uh, that condition, you are going to try to get as far away from this creature as you can. You can't move towards it willingly, and you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while it's still within your line of sight. That is its turn. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, I wanted to get two attacks. So, um, let's see, the other eye is going to target Zephyr. You must give me a constitution save, please. 10. One of the other eyes, as the one looks down the hallway and you hear Lilith go, oh God, ah! And the other eye turns over to you and a, a, a ray shoots out of it, hitting you. Uh, you, you suddenly feel tense and you feel paralyzed oh. uh, for the next minute. Oh, that's good. Oh, frig. For a whole minute, huh? I thought that was going to be disintegrate. You can. Uh, it's on here. I uh, know it is. <laughs> <laughs> Saul, your turn. There's no good choices here. So it, it's moved kind of towards the doorway that we came into this room um, from pursuing Lilith. Is it blocking the doorway? Yeah, it's sort of, it's floating, so you could still go underneath of it if you wanted to, but it is uh, in the doorway, in the hallway. And it's large enough that it is sort of covering the entire uh, pathway, uh, other than underneath of it. I think I'm going to cast Hypnotic Pattern, third level spell. So it's a 30-foot cube that I'm going to center on this beast. (laughs) It's all of us. Yeah. Well, you'll be you'll be charmed, which is fine because you're already. <laughs> he wants you to think so. He's evil. He's evil. Saul's very charming. Okay, if you're not Saul already charmed evil. by him, then. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's a wisdom saving throw for this. Everybody. Uh, Everybody. <laughs> is Lilith in that too? Thirty foot. Yeah, cube? it That's would be. Huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thirteen. <laughs> Twenty. Wisdom saving throw is about the only thing that Zephyr can do, and basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, D- the DC is fifteen. Okay, well, I'm I fail. Wait a minute, Charmed makes you incapacitated. What? Have a speed of zero. If if you kill the party, Bill, <laughs> it wasn't me in my darkness. Oh, it causes two conditions. I didn't. I thought it just caused Charmed. <laughs> It's literally for quelling huge groups, right? Like that's why the cube is so huge. Okay, I'm gonna quell our huge group. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Buzz is charmed. What happens to Buzz? I, uh, I think I saved. I got 19. Well, I figured. Okay, it's gonna charm. It might charm some friendlies, but we're already friends, so no big deal. We're already friends. <laughs> but it also causes charm. incapacitated. So everyone has I a need speed a drink. of zero. What is happening? Like a whole minute. <laughs> you well, can it was, n- it was nice knowing you all. <laughs> At least you're gonna die thinking that you really like me. <laughs> I, I made my save. I made, oh, my, I save, made my save. So. I made my save too. <laughs> Buzz really likes you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. If if I'm hearing this correctly, 
the zombie eye tyrant now cannot move. And it's also charmed, I might add. A charmed creature a charmed creature can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. The charmer has advantage on any ability check to interact socially with the creature. An hypnotic pattern also stipulates that the charmed creature can't move. So now the only person that it can reach is Zephyr, who is paralyzed. And you no, know, an incapacitated creature can't take actions or reactions. We can't do anything for a minute. Okay. So essentially, your uh, your paralyzation and your fear will end right at the same time that we all are no longer uh, I'm incapacitated. Paralyzed and afraid. <laughs> hey, no, we got six seconds. We got, we got six seconds on it. That's true. <laughs> Well, what are Saul and Lilith going to do for 54 seconds? Well, Saul, you see Buzz, like, sword hand drop it aside. Bees kind of lilting around him in the air. <laughs> just yes. soft, this soft, like, melodic. <laughs> so Saul's going to go over to Buzz and start trying to pull Buzz toward the door that we came into this room by. Toward the monster. Which is where the monster's standing. Hypnotic pattern reads, the spell ends for an affected creature if it takes any damage or if someone uses an action to shake the creature out of its stupor. Well, I can't use it. I can't use an action to do that. Um, But I will move over toward you and start pulling on you. I'll tell you what. I'll give you... uh, uh, I'm going to give you... We're going to roll some percentile die. And I'll give you a... A seventy percent chance you do not wake him out of his stupor. So roll roll a percentile die, and if you get above a seventy, you're gonna wake. Him. I wasn't I wasn't expecting I'd be able to wake him. I was kind of just hoping. I was kind of hoping to start. I mean that's a good him. thing. But but yeah, if you, if you allow it, I'll I will I will hop on board with that. Uh, Sixty six, close. Oh. Okay, so he, <laughs> close, but no so cigar. He's nice. Still incapacitated, which is good. I mean, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, then we go to Zephyr. So I get to try and save against being paralyzed. You can do that, yes. I rolled a three. Buzz. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't do anything. <laughs> Lilith. At least I'm not the bad guy anymore, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, incapacitated so and you're scared. And I'm afraid. Ah! She made her save. She's not incapacitated. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now you can you can make your save. I'm scared. Somebody help me. You can do a wisdom save to see if you're still frightened. So does she have to run or she just can't move closer to it? Cannot move closer to it actively. Uh, no, that's not enough. So you're still uh, afraid. But I'm not paralyzed. Yeah. So do you want to do you want to run or do you want to uh, stay where you are? I'm gonna I'm gonna roll firebolt with disadvantage at it, and then I'm gonna run. No. You're gonna shake it awake. Yeah, that is oh, incredible. Is it incapa- It's incapacitated. Don't okay. deal damage to it. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. It was. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> just I just thought about just all boogaloo. of us this whole time. Just get out of there. Yeah, yeah I'm boo. So Lil- Lilith's gonna leave, and she's gonna go into the door across the hall, so we can <laughs> open up more things, have more things attack us. You go over to the door. That door is locked. We okay. can find its twin that door's sister locked. over there. <laughs> so, okay, that door's locked. So she's gonna head south her full movement and she'll and she'll wait in the hallway for other people to join her hopefully (laughs) (laughs) so now we go to the zombie eye tyrant so incapacitated so the creature can't take actions or reactions so there's really nothing that he can do there's no thing so we're moving on to Saul now that I have my full turn I'm going to use my action to shake Buzz maybe give him a smack across his dragonborn face been wanting to do that for a while, but it... <laughs> yeah, make, make an attack roll with advantage. <laughs> oh, well, he doesn't have to punch me; he can literally shake me. No, no, he wants to. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to see if he hits. You. Right, but if he doesn't you hit me, you then I don't wake damage. up. You won't take damage. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, I rolled two eights. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's not very good. <laughs> I'll let you do it. You swing at him and you miss, and you sort of lose your balance. You get back up, you swing, you miss, and you fall into him, shaking him away. <laughs> Perfect. You hit him in the big toe. Okay. All right. And then I'd like to use my movement uh, to move over to Zephyr. Zephyr. 18? You're no longer paralyzed. Woo! Let's go. Goes to bus. 
Okay, seeing that Zephyr is movable now, Buzz is gonna get out of here if that's what we're doing. Can kind of make it just around the corner. Out of this room. Oh, I guess I could dash. I'll dash down to Lilith, I guess. No, I would. I won't get that far from Zephyr. Lilith? I'm gonna try. Is this door locked that I'm standing by? It is locked. But what you do notice on that door, uh, a lot of large scratches on the outside, like something was trying to work its way into What it. is this into fucking it? place? Like, seriously. No <laughs> wonder the guy doesn't live here anymore. This place is a fucking cesspool. Okay, I move ten feet forward to the, to the other door. Is it locked? Uh, that door is not locked. I open that door. An acrid smell assaults your nostrils. This large, unusually shaped chamber appears largely empty, but the floor bears remnants of chalk markings and wax strippings. Like bodies outlined in chalk? No, just, just like markings on the floor, uh, different types of symbols and things with chalk. I'll just I'll just say, like, come this way! Saul, back to you. What do I think about Zephyr's current condition from my perspective? What, what can you, I tell? You see me start to move. Okay, so then I will um, assume that you'll be able to follow as well, and I'm going to try and duck under this beholder-type uh, creature out through the door and follow Buzz and Lilith. All right, and there's no point in, you know, going through this since I can't move him. So if you want to go ahead and move out, Zephyr, uh, I assume you can all make it out to the hallway. I'll let Saul and Zephyr go ahead of me, and I'll kind of be the last one in the train as we follow Lilith down south. It shut the door south behind me. Uh, I mean, I'll mage it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, about a minute passes. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can make it all the way down to the, the room at the bottom. Get in, get in. Yikes. And you want to go in? I mean, yeah, we got to file in and shut the door. So, yeah, we got to get in here. Saul, get down here. This large, unusually shaped chamber appears largely empty. A wooden box sits on the floor just inside the entrance. The wall um, the wall on the far end of the room is thoroughly blackened as if, as if burnt by incredible heat. Other walls also bear black marks that are oddly scored. Do not touch that box. How do we get out of here? I will walk into the room to see if there's another door somewhere. Yeah, I'll look with you. Uh, do me, uh, give me investigation checks. Nine. Uh, eight. I see chalk marks and wax drippings. So yeah, as you look, or look around, you <laughs> see what looks to be these big, uh, the wall has like, these big uh, marks of, it looks like something's burned or exploded around it. And the floor is just covered with this black soot. And as you're uh, looking around on the walls, you see, uh, Little small pieces of candles, candle stubs, a lot of sulfur powder everywhere. As you're sort of, I assume you're like looking for secret doors and things like that, right? It's clear that this is like a dead end in here. A regular door would do. It doesn't have to be secret. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see any regular doors. And as you're checking for uh, secret doors or any kind of mechanisms or anything like that, you, you sort of wipe on the, the walls, which are just covered in this soot. And you notice that there's absolutely no damage to the walls when you wipe them off. So it's like there's been massive explosions that smashed against the wall, but there's absolutely no damage. The wax makes me think that things may have been summoned in this room. Something's not right. It's... So the two sorcerers give me uh, investigation or... Yeah, let's do investigation. Fourteen. Fourteen for me as well. Whoa! You both look around a little bit, and after a few minutes, you realize this looks like a place where someone of uh, with magical powers of uh, maybe a wizard with uh, fire magic would become to practice. It's almost like testing spells. Doesn't this smell like like what I did to the trophy room? This is, it's got to be fire magic. Some. So you sort of figure that it, marking things on a wall with the chalk or on the floor, and then casting things. Practicing. And, oh, see? Yep, right here. That's like the 15-foot cone. They had it all measured out. Yeah, I, I, okay. think, I think you're right. I suspect that someone's been practicing fire magic here. Yes, definitely. Interessante. 
All right, where is there nowhere to go? Then we just go it back. It does seem like a dead end, I, I guess. we. There's we should... one door left from the trophy room. We go to the south door, guys, right? We passed several doors on the way here. They were locked. I tried it. I tried that door right, right up. Right up along the wall in this hallway. Running from the eyeball, dude. Well, let's... Let's get moving if we're gonna go back. I don't want to run into that creature again. It's disgusting. Yeah, so both the doors on the western side, uh, as you tried to open them, as, you know, you were a little bit scared with this big eye tyrant chasing you, uh, you couldn't get either one of them open. They seemed to be locked or at least difficult to open. I mean, maybe the mage hand could get it. I don't know. Okay, but... Stay here. Buzz is going to slink out. No, Saul, no. Stay in this room. Don't go in <laughs> Buzz is going to stealth wait. out because he Before is you walk out the door, stealthy. I am going to. to say Don't a you walk prayer. out that door on me. <laughs> no, I'm going to give you the blessing of the trickster. As an action, I can touch a willing creature other than myself and give it advantage. Give you advantage on stealth checks for an hour. Whoa, that's nuts. Okay. That is pretty sweet. I'm going to feel like Shaft here in a second. I also do have Pass Without Trace. Oh my god. Okay, I'm, well then I'm going to sneak down this hallway and sneak out of there and try to see where this zombie thing is. To see if it's even safe for us to go back. Like, we got to go right past this room where it was, right? And where are you headed? Well, I'm going to step in, uh, close this southern door behind me to the dead end chamber and I'll slink in and I'll try to fiddle with, cause like you had said, the doors are kind of weird and I've opened a lot with my mage hand and basically the mage hand is my hand. So I'm gonna try to get in there and mage hand this thing open. Which one, the one on the one, the, the first one on my left. Uh, give me a sleight of hand. Uh, 22. So you you go up and you mess with the, the door handle a little bit. It, doesn't seem to be working it it you you find this little uh, switch on the side that you click and the the handle sort of slides in and turns and you hear a click but it still doesn't open hmm mm, I whisper to myself no traps and I'll walk up to the door and sh- and try it try it myself see if I can like maybe put some force behind it because I know it's not trapped because I checked with my mid hand <laughs> Give me a. So you say you're just going to try to. It's already s- sort of turned. So you're just going to try to push it in with your shoulder. Yeah, stealthily, uh, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give me. A, give me a strength. Strength check. Oh, that's going to be not great. Two. I'm not a strong man. And <laughs> you. You sort of still. You know, wiggle the handle and and things as you're. And you hear it sort of. You know when. Like when there's a mechanism that's sort of uh, got a loose, loose inside of the wall where it's sort of like you know something's happened, but it still doesn't seem to give way. All right, well, then I'm going to try to stealth back to the trophy room and try the south door there. Hopefully, maybe something will connect. There is a door on the, the west hand side uh, halfway up this hall. I don't know if you can see it. If you... Yeah, yeah, I guess I'll, uh, well. I think I'm going to blitz right by this uh, because that's like literally across the hall from the (laughs) zombie thing room. So I'm just going to bypass that one. So you're in the trophy room now on the southern door that you uh, was locked. uh, Or, no, sorry, you never went there before. No, we haven't tried that one. So this one, as you go to open the door, you turn the handle. You figure out the little uh, clicks that you need to do to, to make it go to open and you push and it seems like there's something blocking it from the other side okay i will retrieve the others then because i'm not strong enough to open this clearly (laughs) this seems like more um give me a investigation check one okay yeah it does it's just not open (laughs) i'll uh, i'll go get i'll go get the others (laughs) (laughs) there is an impassable door here (laughs) Impossible to open! I will try and open the door. I'll try and push on it. We can all push. So as you as you start to mess with this, you you feel the door sh- rattling. You sort of get 
the impression that on the other side of this door, there's some kind of a bar or beam that's sort of locking it in place. Like from the other side was was jammed to keep anybody from this room going into that hallway. So you want to do a strength? You're just going to try to push through this? At least it's not keeping some in. Uh, yes, that is my only option to try and push on this. I'm just going to run into it and try and, and ram, body ram it. Give me a good old strength. Six. You run up, you smash your shoulder against the door, you sort of fall back a little bit, and you go, I don't think I did anything. Buzz, maybe if we do it together. I want to heal. Let's, okay, let's do it, I guess. All right, so you can, if you can, one of the two of you can roll the other, and since it's helping, the uh, uh, get advantage. I mean, my strength is an eight, so if anyone's is higher than that at all. <laughs> uh, Ten was my highest. Yeah, with advantage, I have a twelve. <laughs> so you you do smash into the door. It sort of breaks part of the, the mech, whatever it is on the other side. As you notice, as you're smashing into these doors, there there's not even a... A scratch. But whatever is on the other side is making a cracking noise. Can we keep beating on it till we bust it open? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. I want. Let's do it one more time. Alright, give me one more and then we'll... 21! So you, you, you both sort of rear back and you run up to the door and you and thinking it was going to be just as sturdy as it was last time. But when you hit it, it just goes. It was already cracked most of the way through. So the the door swings back open, still on the hinges, unscathed. But this big bar that was holding on the other side cracks and flays out into the hallway. And you both go falling into the hallway. Lilith cheers and and she shows her fangs like she's tough. Like, (sighs) So you see a hallway that goes down about 20 feet and then turns uh, in the western direction. This is lit, not magically now. There is an actual torch that's lighting this area. Is this the first non-magical light we've seen? Yes. Oh. I will go down to the end of the hall and see what is down the turn. All right. So this is a 30-foot long hallway. And uh, most of the way down, on there's a door to the south and a door at the far end. Wow, there are so many doors in this place. I will open the southern door. Oh, what about traps? The door swings open to reveal a high ceiling circular chamber. A round fire pit lies in the center of the area surrounded by woven mats. A dim, steady illumination is provided by glowing globes that uh, float overhead. Uh, Squatting near the fire pit are four creatures of savage disposition. Uh, Two of the humanoids carry pole arms, wear only torn rags, over their pebbled purple skin and uh, sport beards that look very much like they're fashioned from wire. The other two creatures are smaller but no less sinister in appearance. Red-skinned humanoids held aloft by semi-transparent wings. The numerous long spines on their limbs, their thorny tails, their forehead horns denote otherworldly origins. Uh, Their faces twist into sneers as they catch sight of you. Near the humanoids is a fearsome canine, a mastiff-like creature with sooty skin and eyes that glow like smoldering red coals. Cords in the neck straining the creature as he tenses to pounce. I shut the door. This has been a Sounds of Steel production.